The last thing that I think is useful to know in order to um, move towards neural networks is to go through my videos on logistic regression, softmax regression, and basis functions. So here this slide mainly summarizes binary logistic regression, where we're trying to assign um, uh, an input as belonging to one of two classes, class zero or class one. How we do this um, with logistic regression is we use um, this sigmoid function. So we've got some input x, and we essentially take the dot product of x with some weight vector w, which we will learn, and then we push that through the sigmoid. So just as a quick reminder, what does the sigmoid function look like? It basically starts at zero, then moves up to a half, and then flattens out at one again. This, so if this is sigmoid of a, and our variable is on this axis a, then here we've got a half, and here we've got one. Okay, so how does this help us? This means that if my weight um, vector times my input is very large positive number somewhere here, then I output a value close to one. If my weight times my um, input x is a very large negative number somewhere here, then I output a value close to zero, which is class zero. So we're really interpreting the output of the sigmoid as the probability of belonging to class one. Okay. How do we train this thing? How do we um, choose a good w for our problem setting? We do what we always do in machine learning. So we define some loss function, which in this case is the negative log likelihood, and then we're going to minimize that loss function. So what is the negative log likelihood? Um, uh, sometimes I just write NLL. Uh, it's nice because it's in the name, right? So it's the negative of the log of the likelihood. And for logistic regression, this specifically is the conditional likelihood of the labels given my data set. Okay. And because my each of my um, capital N training points, um, we assume they're identically and independently distributed, um, I can just take the product of all of them. Now, the nice thing about taking the negative of the log of the likelihood is that this product, um, when we have the log of a product, it becomes the sum of the logs. And you can stick this in here and then you can um, convince yourself that this is the negative log likelihood for binary logistic regression. Cool. This isn't all we need because we actually, we've defined our loss function, but now we actually need to minimize it with respect to our parameters. Our parameters in this case is the single vector w, and for that we need to get our partial derivatives, and because you're experts in vector and matrix calculus, um, you now know what this means. You can go through the math and you can convince yourself that this is the partial derivatives in this case. And if you have this, then you can do gradient descent, which um, then optimizes the w. Um, it's also important to know how to interpret the W for logistic regression, and you can th um, it turns out that the W vector is always perpendicular to the decision boundary in this case. Okay, so that's logistic regression. There's other things on the slide as well. Um, the one thing to take note of is softmax regression. Um, and softmax regression is an extension of logistic regression, but now the output isn't just um, class 0 or 1, it's not just a binary decision, but it's a decision between um, a whole bunch of classes up to capital K. So for instance, maybe your input X is an X-ray of a chest, and you want to classify whether the patient is healthy, whether they've got COVID, whether they've got tuberculosis, whether they've got a pneumonia, okay, and so on, up to capital K possible conditions that this um, person can have. And you can go through the softmax regression videos, but that's basically an extension of logistic regression. Okay, and then the other thing I want you to take note of is basis functions. Again, there's a, um, a good set of videos about basis functions. So instead of using x directly, we're going to transform x with some functions that we design or choose. So maybe you take some of um, you maybe take the square of x1 and maybe the log of x3. And uh, you need to think carefully about why you use particular basis functions and you can go and watch the video where, where I talk about this. But the cool thing is you can go, if you're, for instance, doing binary logistic regression with basis functions, you follow exactly these steps and everywhere where you've got an x, you just write um, the basis function of, of x. For binary logistic regression, for instance, then um, your model, if 
w of x would just be the sigmoid, still your weight vector, but then instead of writing x, we use the transformation of x into our, our basis function. And then you just have this basis function that, that just pops up there and you just transfer it through. And, and that's really, um, really convenient. Why? Because in the end, if you choose your basis functions um, correctly, then if you look at x space, what you can end up with is nonlinear decision boundaries. So maybe a boundary looking more like this, depending on your basis functions. The model is still linear with respect to your parameters, but you get these nonlinear decision boundaries in X space. I will actually recap that at the start of the next video, because what we will do in order to understand neural networks is although I will basically show you that you can think of logistic regression with basis functions as a neural network. So in the sense, you've actually, if you've watched all my previous videos, you've actually already seen neural networks.